claims representatives meeting with residents today. Good evening, I'm Jessica Crawford. I'll have a live report from Port Natchez. And major repairs coming to Fort Park in Beaumont. We'll tell you about the improvements and how much they'll cost. And for the next few days, still fairly cool, a little bit of warm up by the weekend. Fox 4 News starts right now. Assessing the damage, we're continuing to follow the aftermath of the TPC plant explosion in Port Natchez. Homeowners are now focused on getting their literally shaken homes more settled. In the press, press conference held last night, TPC said it would have roughly 100 claim representatives out today in high impact zones. Wednesday's explosions left some homes with broken windows, cracked door frames and more. The damage assessors and contractors hired are searching for and clearing out debris that may have fallen from the blast. Tonight, the fire at the plant remains contained. Claims, we've had nearly 50 claims representatives out in the uh, community today, Monday. Uh, and we've been focusing on homes in the uh, high impact areas. Claims processing are expected to uh, accelerate tomorrow with roughly 100 claims representatives in the community that will be visiting all of the impacted zones. And of course, tonight, some of those Port Natchez neighbors meeting with TPC claims representatives. They hope they'll be reimbursed for damage to their homes. Fox Force Jessica Crawford joins us live from Central Park in Port Natchez near the TPC plant. Jessica, how long will this continue? Well, Kim, this will continue on for several more days, and today those representatives were out speaking with residents that were in the highest impact zones. Those were the zones that were hit the hardest by the explosions that took place at the plant that you see behind me on Wednesday. So here's a look into one of those high impact areas from Wednesday's explosions. Multiple claims representatives were seen throughout that area today. Now, according to TPC, nearly 50 of these representatives were out in the community yesterday and again roughly 100 were meeting with impacted residents throughout today. Now claims are divided into two different categories, property damage and evacuation costs. Well, some residents say that they were glad to speak with representatives about both. We just want to get our house back like it was. I told him I said I don't want any extra. I just want my house back fixed right. Now again, these visits are set to continue for several days, so if you weren't seen today, then you could be seen within the coming days. If you have any questions, you can reach out to the helpline at 1-866-601-5880. Live from Port Natchez, I'm Jessica Crawford, Fox 4, working for you. All right, thank you, Jessica. Well, most are now back in their homes following the lifting of the evacuation order, but the American Red Cross is still doing its part with its recovery center. The center is now open at First Baptist Church, Nederland, and that's at 1911 Nederland Avenue. It's designed to help people get back on their feet, offering guidance about resources and the recovery process. Caseworkers will be available to help create recovery plans, navigate paperwork, and locate assistance. If you plan on making a visit, make sure to bring proof of address, such as an ID or utility bill. Well, students in the Port Natchez Groves ISD have finished their first day back at school since the TPC explosions and fire. School was out for Thanksgiving break last week already, and the district canceled classes Monday to allow for repairs and to check for debris. The district contracted with the company to walk the grounds of campuses looking for metal and other debris propelled by the explosions last week. And as always, we'll continue to bring you the latest coverage on the TPC plant explosion as we get more updates. Stay with us on air and online at fox4beaumont.com. Well, a chilly night for a lot of us in the area. Chief Meteorologist Greg Bostwick joins us now with a first look at our forecast. So, Greg, is it going to be chilly again tonight? Not quite as cold, but okay. cool enough to probably grab a jacket, I would okay. think. Uh, we had a lot of 30s last night with scattered frost. And with clear skies and light winds, we're over in Orange looking into southwest Louisiana. Temperatures will fall at a pretty good clip as we head through the evening and overnight hours. Sponsored by Thermacon over there. And over at Jasper, the high was only 65, 33 this morning. We had some 32 scattered here and there. And uh, the humidity is still relatively low and little if any breeze. Actually, those winds will turn back around out of the north and northeast. 
beginning tomorrow. So we're going to talk about the weekend forecast. Looks like it's going to warm up briefly a week front on Friday. What impact that will have on our forecast, we'll take a look in a few minutes. All right, we look forward to it. Thank you, Greg. Well, happening now, the South Texas State Fair is a little over 100 days away, and major improvements are coming to Beaumont's Ford Park ahead of that fair. Fox Forest Hand Radford was in attendance at the Commissioner's Court meeting in Jefferson County, where the improvements were discussed. And she joins us now in the studio. Uh, Tan, these are more than $100,000 worth of repairs being done. That's right, Kimberly, close to $150,000, and it's for safety reasons. The YMBL is concerned the asphalt could be dangerous for fairgoers. Today, Jefferson County commissioners agreed to remove asphalt while the culverts and pipes failed under the midway due to drain misalignment causing water spill and erosion. The midway area holds rides, food booths, and more. The YMBL says the eroded midway caused safety concern for fairgoers. Fixing the foundation will cost the county nearly $150,000 and may take up to 30 days to finish. The YMBL president says this is the first step in the solution. If you don't repair that to begin with, you're not fixing anything. You're putting a band-aid on top of it. So certainly it would be to go in, repair the culverts, and then put a good uh, a top layer on top of it that would have time to harden before the fair. The YMBL will meet with commissioners Tuesday to discuss patching the asphalt on the midway or doing a new asphalt overlay. Kimberly? All right, thank you, Tan. A Jefferson County deputy is in critical condition tonight at Christus Hospital St. Elizabeth with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. According to Port Arthur Police Chief Tim Duraso and Sheriff Zena Stevens, the incident happened early Sunday afternoon on Twin City Highway near Ancelot's Market in Port Arthur. We were in class today and my teacher walked out of the class because we heard some screaming. And then after like two minutes, she ran back into the classroom and she's like, everybody needs to evacuate right now. And well, parents lined up earlier today outside a middle school where students were evacuated. This shooting happened at Oshkosh West High School in the town of Oshkosh, about 55 miles southwest of Green Bay. The school resource officer confronted an armed student and both were injured. The shooting happened a day after a shooting at a high school in the Waukesha school district. The suspect in that was a 17 year old male who was injured. Also, the schools where the shootings occurred are about 85 miles apart. But a very frosty night last night. Temperatures should begin to warm up. It looks like we could see some 70s again for tomorrow. Also coming up after more than a year of denying any wrongdoing, a California congressman pleads guilty in court today. Find out what charges he answered to later on Fox 4 News at 530. Your weather authority. Well, it certainly was a frosty morning all the way from Mid County across the lakes this morning. 34 up at Coots Elementary and did reach 70 though. Nice recovery from that cold morning start. Winds are light mainly out of the east and southeast at the present time. Pretty much calm and we'll see those winds reversing coming out of the north and northeast during the day tomorrow, but also light winds expected and there's not many clouds. It's a few streaking across Arkansas back in the Mississippi. Mostly clear skies for tonight. Now by later on tonight, there will be some high clouds I think in play by then, but uh, that's not going to really cause any problems at all. In fact, those clouds thin a little bit as we work towards 7 a.m. The winds shift out of the north at that point and during the day tomorrow, lots of sunshine with those variable high clouds uh, coming on into early on Thursday morning. Still a few clouds in place and our winds start to return off the Gulf, setting the stage for a brief warm up Thursday and Friday ahead of the next front. Temperatures not mainly in the mid 40s, uh, low 40s across the lakes, and we'll look for highs tomorrow to bounce back up very nicely up to around 70 degrees. So a pretty warm day coming up for tomorrow afternoon. As far as what's going on in the extended period, we're still looking at a change in the forecast, and that's going to be a front arriving early next week. A jet stream will be diving back down to the center of the country. So there's a pretty cold air here mixing down to the northern plains and Great Lakes. However, it just can't really push much further south because it's being cut off here at the west and southwest flow. So that flow is going to be overrunning some of the cool air when it does rise. Bulk of the cold air stays to the north and will give us a good chance of rain on Tuesday. So we can look at that as a definite possibility. But ahead of that, about 79 on Monday two degrees for the high up around Fargo. So there's a big contrast there, really cold 
Arctic air up to our north. That front will arrive on Tuesday, pressing on into the area as we're working to the morning. Notice a lot of rain expected with that, reaching I-10 around mid-afternoon and offshore in the Gulf for Tuesday night. So not expecting real heavy rain, although certainly could see a half inch to an inch of rain. Bear in mind, though, that's still seven days out, so some changes could occur, but right now a pretty high chance of some rain in the forecast. For the next few days, low temperature-wise, 40s for lows, 63 Friday morning, brief cool down here, but not much cooler, into the 50s Saturday and Sunday. The forecast for the lakes, lower 40s in the forecast of light and variable winds. For the Triangle, also a quiet forecast, mid to upper 40s overnight. And tomorrow, quite a bit of sunshine, just a few high clouds, upper 60s near 70 for the high, and about 70 the Triangle, also a few variable high clouds with northeasterly winds. Your extended outlook is sponsored by Philpot Ford, and it calls for one front to come through Friday, limited moisture, therefore limited coverage of rain. Saturday and Sunday should be beautiful, and then we'll have that big chance rain looks like coming at us around Tuesday of next week. Still to come, another contender dropping out of the 2020 race. Why Kamala Harris is calling it quits. You're watching Fox 4 News. An early California Senator Kamala Harris announces she's dropping out of the 2020 presidential race. The Democratic Senator informing her staff today that she will withdraw her bid for president. Her decision to end her campaign coming after she canceled a high profile fundraiser which was set up in New York. In an email to her, her supporters, Harris stated, quote, it is with deep regret but also with deep gratitude that I am suspending my campaign. She remains California's junior senator and her term ends in 2022. Also out of California, Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter pleads guilty to misusing $250,000 in campaign funds. Duncan reportedly telling a local San Diego TV station he decided to change his previous plea of not guilty to spare his children the hardship of a trial. Earlier this year, his wife Margaret Hunter also pleaded guilty to misusing campaign funds. The couple is accused of using campaign money to cover everything from medical expenses to vacations and expensive dinners and gifts. Hunter faces up to five years in prison. Well, still ahead, the House Intelligence Committee releasing its impeachment report today. What the report says about the amount of evidence against President Trump. The Intelligence Committee has released a 300-page report outlining evidence against President Trump. It's the result of 17 witness interviews, including the 12 conducted during two weeks of public hearings. The report concludes evidence of the president's obstruction of justice is overwhelming. It criticizes Trump for endangering national security to benefit his own reelection. But it stops short of recommending impeachment, saying Congress will have to make that decision. House Democrats are expected to use the document as a basis for drafting articles of impeachment. France is promising to take swift action against the United States after President Trump proposes tariffs on a number of French products. The Trump administration has threatened to impose tariffs on French goods, including cheese, handbags, wine and champagne. These tariffs are coming after France placed a digital services tax on a number of American tech companies, including Google, Facebook and Amazon. France says these companies need to begin to pay their fair share of taxes in the countries in which they operate. As we wrap up Fox 4 News next, in a galaxy far, far away, might be one lucky Star Wars super fan. How you can get paid to binge watch all the Star Wars movies. This segment is sponsored by Dabney Garage Door. Well, here's a look at our pet picks that we didn't get to yesterday. First up, we have Flower. Mm -hmm. Very nice there. That yeah. looks like a little glamour shot, Flower. Oh, my gosh. And then Turn Marley. My head and watch <laughs> I Turn know. My head. He's a cutie pie. Yeah. Sideways. Very mm -hmm. cute, Marley. And then lastly, we have Luna Lovegood. That's what an interesting name. name. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to send in your pet picks, you know what to do. Go to our website, foxforbeaumont.com. Well, calling all Star Wars junkies, you could get paid to watch your favorite movies now. Hmm. Are you a Star Wars 
fan? I like the uh, first ones. I'm not much of a fan of the, the latest renditions. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, this may not be your thing, but CableTV.com is looking for someone to screen the entire Star Wars saga in one sitting. So if you can survive all oh 22 hours and 25 minutes, the company will give you $1,000 plus a welcome package with all 10 films on Blu-ray. In return, all you have to do is share your experience on social media, and you have to apply for this. The job's deadline coincides with the release of the fantasy series final chapter on December 20th, and you have until the 11th to apply. And there'll probably so. be one person win. I Don't know, you think? <laughs> one person, when there's a lot of Star Wars yeah, fanatics who yeah. could easily do that. I would think so. you have to apply and right. they have to pick you out. So. And that's right. Y'all have so fun with it's that. It's not free money, let's put it that way. Right. Uh, looking dry until we get to Friday, a small chance there. The weekend looks spectacular. Lots of sunshine expected. All right, good. Okay. We look forward to the weekend. Yes. Right. Thank you, Greg. And thank you for watching us here on Fox 4 News at 530. We'll see you back at 9.